2022 is going to be a great year. I cannot wait to make so much more content for you guys. Okay, maybe I've taken a bit of a hiatus, but that's for good reason. I've recently bought a house and I've been working on a ton of upgrades and I've been doing all the yard work myself. So posting videos wasn't very much on my mind, but I'm back. And one thing I have not had a shortage on was playing Apex Legends and climbing those ranks. But through all that time playing Apex Legends and other FPS games, I actually had a chance to try out all the different types of controllers that I have in this room. So what I wanna to do today is actually tell you guys what is my favorite controller and ultimately what do I recommend you guys buy for yourself? Because I do have a lot of controllers and I have done a ton of testing. And you guys have been asking me to make a video about this. So I think it's time to dive right into it. The two main companies that I have bought from in the past was Hex Gaming and Scuff. Scuff was the first custom controller that I did get and that was followed by the Hex Gaming PS4 controller. After that, when the PS5 came out, I did get the rival controller and ultimately, no pun intended, the last controller I did get was the Hex Gaming Ultimate controller. So basically, one controller from Scuff, the other three from Hex Gaming, two of them are for the PS4, while two of them are for the PS5. Up until making this video, Apex Legends was a PS4 game, so you could use either a PS4 controller or a PS5 controller, even though I was playing this game on my PS5. So starting off, let's just go straight into the Scuff controller, okay? Like I said earlier, this was the first controller that I did get. There wasn't much customizations to this at all. This is almost like a stock PS4 controller, and as you can see, it almost looks like a stock PS4 controller. Aside from the back triggers, which you could change the actualization on them, so you could actually customize how much of a trigger pull was required for like the button to be activated. Also, it does come with a rubber back finish, and it has two paddles on the back. Scuff has been in the industry for so long, and whenever anybody thinks about custom controllers, the first name they think about is Scuff. One thing I've always liked about this controller, once you get used to it, of course, is that the actuations for the paddles were solid. Like, you know, when you press it, like you're actually pressing it. There's no ambiguity of any type of sort whenever you're using this controller. Now, if you could look closely, this controller actually has two different colors for the thumbsticks. And that's actually because one of the thumbsticks did break. It was unfortunate, but fortunately, the thumbsticks, to replace them, it's like $10. It wasn't that big big of a deal, but regardless, it did happen. Also, one thing to know about these type of controllers, or at least this one, if you do get these type of controllers or these uh, these type of triggers where they're not digital, they could run into some issues because for me, if I have like a single fire weapon and I'm tapping this thing, sometimes because it's not a digital trigger and you have it set so that it's not being fully actuated, like you're not pressing it all the way down, sometimes it doesn't actually shoot. So you could be pressing R2 like your shooting button and it won't actually do what it's supposed to do. Next up, we have the Hex Gaming PS4 controller. Now this one is obviously much more bulkier than the stock PS4 controller that you could buy. This one does come with four different buttons that you could actually press. So two for each one of your hands. Just like the scuff controller, this one you do have the opportunity to change the trigger pulls, whether you want it short or if you want it long. And of course, one of the most notable features about this controller is the color scheme. This controller has like a nice purple, blue, chameleon finish to it. And it looks pretty sick, I'm not gonna lie. Besides the look of it, this controller was absolutely ass. This is my first experience using any type of button layout and honestly, I hated it. I did not like it and I only had like a few hours of playtime with this controller. I just never got used to the buttons. It's just going from something like this, which has paddles, to something like this that has buttons, it just it just was a night and day difference. Paddles are just so much better and you have so much more lee room of like where you have to put your fingers because on the paddles, even if you're not like, if you have your finger more closer to the top or more closer to the bottom, you could still activate those paddles. With this, however, since it's buttons, your finger has to be exactly on those buttons. So if your hands are too big or too small, you might have troubles pressing those buttons. So I never really actually liked this controller. Another thing is that of course, like I said earlier, this controller does have four buttons. There's no point of having four buttons. There's never a use of having your triangle or your square on the back paddles. I just don't see it. It won't actually make a difference in your actual gameplay. It will not make you any better. The only reason for having back paddles or back buttons is to use it for your jump and crouch. Also, as you guys may notice, like I said many times before, this controller is quite big. It's much bigger than your regular standard PS4 controller size. 
So that does add to the kind of wonkiness that this controller has. And lastly, one big thing, I think this was like the deal breaker for me, was that on the back of the controller, it does have similar trigger uh, options for the R1 and R, sorry, R2 and L2 buttons. And you could change it using these little knobs right here. So you could do like a long press or if it's up, you do like a short press. But the thing is that these knobs kind of get in the way of your index finger. So after a long time of playing, it is super uncomfortable. And all the time that I've used this controller, I've always had some type of bruise on my index finger. Is this in my middle finger? Why do I keep on saying index? Stupid! My middle fingers. So that's why I never really use this controller. And honestly, it just has like that cheaper feel compared to the rest of the controls on this table. Moving on towards the PS5, we have starting off the Hex Gaming Rival Controller. This of course was the first controller from Hex Gaming that they introduced for the PS5. And they were actually one of the first ones to actually have a custom controller for the PS5. It has digital triggers on the back and it has a pretty cool customization of black, gold, and red. And it has a rubberized grip on the back of the controller. This PS5 version, it looks like a PS5 controller. It has the same form and shape as a PS5 controller. They did not do the whole bulky feel of it. And I think that is a great step forward. Now this controller, unlike the last controller, which had buttons, this controller went for the paddle option and these paddles were very very nice I am not going to lie this controller has very very light paddles as compared to the scuff controller which has much more it requires a much more heavier press this one it's a much more lighter feel so if um, if your hand gets cramped up with controllers that have much more like heftier requirements for the push this controller you will not have that issue however the downside of having triggers that are so light is that it makes it very very fragile. Now, I didn't really tell anybody this, but this is actually the second Hex Gaming Rival controller that I've had. Because what happened was that a month later after I got this controller, the left trigger button, it ended up breaking. So I had to send it back and they sent me a brand new controller. Fortunately, Hex Gaming has a pretty good warranty process. So they sent me back a new controller with no problems whatsoever, which is good. But that is a problem that you got paddles breaking like one month in. Another thing about this controller is that the R1 and L1 buttons are kind of weird in their placement. As you'll see on screen right now, they kind of shake a little bit. They're just not really in their snug. And because of this, when you're trying to like spam click the R1 button, which I do a lot in Apex because actually, if you guys didn't know, I use R1 for my picking up button. Basically my square button is my R1 button. So if I need to do any type of interactions with anything in the game or do any uh, reloading or picking up items, I use my R1 button for that. And when I try spam clicking this button, sometimes it registers, sometimes it doesn't because this button right here is just kind of wonky and it just, the placement's very strange on it. Now moving on towards the last controller that I have I've gotten recently this is also from hex gaming and this one is the hex gaming ultimate controller now this one here has very similar features to the rival controller of course it comes with the digital triggers on the back but this one does have four paddles instead of the two that were on the previous controller that I just talked about. And of course, this one does come with a control freaks on it, but we're gonna disregard that for today's video. We'll talk about that later. And this one, of course, doesn't feature a rubberized back. It's more of a textured grip finish, which operates just about the same. Now, I feel like this is like a whole timeline of Hex Gaming, you know, like they go from worse to better to best. All right, so now we're going to the last controller that's in my lineup. Now, this controller, Unlike the rival controller, it has a very similar form factor with the paddles, but it does have four paddles. Like I said earlier, there's absolutely no reason why you need to use all four paddles, but of course it's an option. And one thing I didn't notice until recently is that the back paddle attachment is actually much more thinner and closer to the controller as it is on the rival controller. The rival controller, the back paddles are, it kind of like sticks out a lot more than um, on the ultimate. I think they went in a good direction here. I mean, it feels much more natural to hold this controller as compared to its predecessor and another great thing about this controller is that well these buttons are a lot more firmer i feel like it's a nice middle ground between the scuff infinity and the hex gaming rival controller
controller. The Scuf Infinity controller, it was just very, very difficult to press, especially if you're new to these. And then the Hex Gaming Rival controller was very, very light. And this one was just right in the middle. It feels great and I haven't had any issues and it does not break. I have not seen any type of issues in terms of uh, pressing these back paddles. Another great thing, which a lot of people might overlook is the textured back. A lot of people like this, uh, this more rubberized grip, which is great. It definitely does give you more grip. Well, one thing that I noticed is that if your palms get sweaty, especially if you're doing a very, very sweaty session of any type of FPS game, you're gonna notice that on any type of rubberized grip, you're gonna start slipping. It's it's inevitable. But what's great is that with the Hex Gaming Ultimate Controller, this one has a more, like it's textured. It's not really rubberized, it's more textured. And because of that, even if your hands sweat a little bit, you're not gonna lose any type of grip. And I think a lot of people might've complained about the triggers on the rival controller because if you notice on the ultimate controller if you guys ever get one of these the triggers are just way more refined and it feels much more premium than the rival controller all right so time for the age-old question so which one of these beautiful four controllers do i recommend well i can tell you which one i highly do not recommend and that's this one right here this is the first hex gaming controller don't get this one it's absolutely trash okay but definitely my favorite one out of the whole bunch has been the Hex Gaming Ultimate Controller. I feel like this controller gives you the best of both worlds of what the Scuf had to offer as well as what the Hex Gaming Rival Controller had to offer. It just feels like a much more premium controller as compared to the other options. And I've been using this controller for about seven, yeah, six, seven months now and I have not encountered any type of issues, any type of latency as compared to any other controller. And overall, I think this is a very, very solid controller to use. Now, I know there's so many other options out there. I know Scuf just came out with their new PS5 version of their custom controller. And although I don't have it here, so I can't really tell you guys too much about it, I bet it's a great controller. I know you guys really wanted to know what my recommendation was for my type of custom controllers. I could highly vouch for the Hex Gaming Ultimate Controller. I really do think this is one of the best controllers to buy at the moment. Of course, I am not sponsored by X Gaming. They're not paying me to say this. This is just from personal experience over the last couple months and just using custom controllers. So this is overall the one I do recommend you guys get. X Gaming Ultimate, this one right here, boom. But anyways, guys, that sums everything up. Let me know in the comment section down below if you guys have any questions whatsoever for any of the controllers or any other things going forward. I plan to make a video outlining my favorite control freaks, uh, which spoiler alert, I do highly recommend these things, but I'm gonna make a video all about that. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you like, those, those things do help out the channel. But anyways, guys, my name is Matthew. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, peace out.